In this example, we are going to solve some complex 3D rotations. As you can see, the small motor is attached to the rotating table and supported by two bearings. The motor is spinning around its own axle at constant rate of 1725 rpm. The table itself is rotating at 48 rpm. In this problem, we are going to calculate the reactions of the two bearings considering the rotation of the whole system. The motor itself has a net mass of 7.5 kg and net span of 240 mm and its radius of gyration is around 30 mm. First we will consider the system at equilibrium, without any rotation, and try to find the static reactions of these bearings. First we find the total weight of the motor. In static equilibrium, the weight will be supported by the bearings and due to symmetry, it will be divided equally between the two bearings. The 73.5 newtons will be divided as 36.75 newtons for each bearing. At the instant the system starts rotating, the bearings reactions will be affected by this rotation. As the reference frame itself is rotating, then the angular momentum of the motor will change over time. And this change in angular momentum will create an extra moment component that will act perpendicular to both the spinning axis and rotation axis. In our example, the rotation axis is the blue Z axis and the spin axis is the red X axis. So the moment component will appear over the green Y axis. Using this formula, we can find this moment component. Notice that the formula has a vector cross product. And this will confirm that the moment will be perpendicular to both P spinning and omega rotation. To ensure unit stability, we must change all units to SI system. So we need to convert the angular velocities from RPM to rad per seconds. K is the radius of gyration. And using this formula, we can find the moment of inertia of the system. We can finally find the moment component. Now going back to the bearings. Remember that the net length of the motor is 240 mm. We can see that this moment will create a couple forces on the bearings. And using the couple moment equation, we can find the value of this extra force generated in the bearings. Notice that this force will act upward on the right bearing so it will be added to the previously found static reaction. But the same force will act downward on the left bearing. So it will be subtracted from the static reaction. The main purpose of this example is to show you that finding bearings reactions requires that you consider both static and dynamic reactions. Thank you for watching.